Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're changing light bulbs in some of the battle lanterns, so uh, we thought we'd do a video about them. Maybe we've done one about these in the past. Who knows, we've got over 1,100 videos. So, battle lanterns. What are they? What are they for? You'll see them all over the ship. Oftentimes they're mounted low like this to shine right on the deck, although oftentimes they're also mounted high up in the overhead. Uh, these are the ship's emergency lighting system. The battleship has uh, probably over 6,000 fluorescent light fixtures. Many times when you go into a room on the ship, there are two light switches for that room because the lights in it are on two separate circuits, so you got to turn them both on. And it's usually like every other light comes on and... Uh, why the heck is this like this? Why, why is there that much redundancy? It's because if the ship loses power, the auxiliary diesels can power half of the critical lights on the ship. So half of the lights are on a circuit that is just powered by ship power. Half of the lights are on a circuit that will come on under emergency power through the diesel generator automatically. If something happens and the diesel generator is down or you're using all your diesel power to run the pumps to get the boilers running again or something like this, otherwise the ship loses all power, that's where the battle lanterns come in. You'll notice that this one is wired directly into the ship, but it's not on right now. It can sense when there's power coming to it, and that is when it is off. When no power is coming through the cord to the battle lantern, then it'll flip on automatically. Each battle lantern has two of these six volt dry cells on, in it. Nominally, that's supposed to be enough power for about 24 hours. Uh, in reality, these will still work with a single six volt dry cell and uh, many of the lights will stay on for longer than 24 hours. A museum ship I used to work on once lost power for about a week and some of the lights stayed on for just about that whole time. So um, these also come in a couple of different flavors. Many of them are wired into the ship like this and they've got a mounting bracket on the back. Uh, many of them have a handle on top like this one. And this type, this uh, metal one as opposed to the plasticky type is the uh, old World War II version that the ship was made with. You'll notice it's got a mounting point on the back but also a handle and then it's got a, a little switch on it. It'll turn uh, on and off if you're using it like a regular flashlight because you pulled this out of a damage control locker or if it's wired into the ship it comes on automatically. Another really cool thing about the battle lanterns are They've got a rubber gasket on the inside, so when they're all put together, they're pressurized watertight, which means that as the ship sinks, these will still stay on. So if you're, uh, you've lost power in a flooded compartment, you go into deep water and you drop your light, it's not going to die, it'll still work. Uh, if the ship is flooding and this is lighting the deck here in front of the doorway so you know where you're stepping. There, there isn't a hole blown in the deck here. You can see it from the light. Even if the space is partially flooded or completely flooded, you'll still be able to see that light on. While sailors are trained to navigate the ship in the dark, check out the video in the description below um, where we talk about that, it is still helpful to have emergency lighting on. Uh, so the Navy has multiple different systems the main lighting, the emergency fed to the diesel, and then the emergency battery backup. Also, uh, these are not just in areas like this where you're walking. They're not just in areas where you need a flashlight stored, like a damage control locker. They also show up at many of the battle dressing stations. So wherever there's an overhead, like medical style light, there are usually several of these also mounted in the overhead. So if you lose that light while you're say performing surgery and the doctor is just elbows deep in a guy and the lights go out these will kick on auto almost automatically so he can still see the work that he's doing so why do they make the change out from the old uh, metal style battle lanterns to the newer plastic style and uh, they probably did this in the 1960s for battleship new jersey 
Uh, it seems like earlier to that, she was built with these, and by the 1960s, they had started to switch over to these. And by the 1980s, it's almost all these, except maybe in some places in the gun turrets. I'm not sure if there's a reason to keep the old style, uh, or if it's a uh, just one that they missed when they were going through, so of all the deep, dark places in the ship. But uh, why make the changeover at all? It's a saltwater environment. The metal corrodes. The, the screws are a different material than the metal plate, and so it corrodes and it's a pain to open to change the batteries, which th these batteries don't last a particularly long time, especially in the life of a ship that's operational for close to uh, 50 years in and out of service. So these, they've got brass screws, plastic plate, they're not corroding like these do. Which kind do you guys prefer? The uh, old school green ones or the more modern type? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for more ways you can donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.